evening, everyone. It's so good to see you this evening. Thank you for being here, and we're going to start out with, um, well, I'm going to start with a word of prayer, and then we'll get into everything that's on our list tonight. So let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful season. We thank you for this evening as we are celebrating your birth, Lord Jesus. And God, we pray your blessing upon our time tonight, and we commit it to you. In your precious name we pray, amen. Amen. And now Levi Thayer is going to light our Advent candles for us. You, Levi. And I'm going to invite you to stand. We're going to sing our first Christmas carol. This is O Little Town of Bethlehem. And the word is right up here. So. seated. And our first reading tonight will be a responsive reading, so I will read um, the light parts, and then there's going to be some darker lettering up there, I believe, or I guess yellow, that, <laughs> that uh, you, we'll read together. So, okay, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel, and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, 
and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms bloodstained by war will all be burned. They will be fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. Amen. Okay, our second hymn is the first Noel, and we'll just you can just remain seated as we sing this one. So our next reading, um, Luke 2, 1 to 7, will be with Charlie Munson. will read that for us. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nations of Israel, and people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest. 
and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burdens from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warriors and the uniforms bloodstained by war will all be burdened. They will be fuel for the fire. Okay, we'll start on Luke 2, 1 through 7 this time. <laughs> At that time, the Roman Empire, Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when uh, Quirinus was governor of Syria. All returned to their aunt's own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph, Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea. David's ancient home, he traveled there from the village of Nazareth to, in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. Okay, now our choir is going to sing for us.
Now Sean will read our next scripture. Luke 2, 8 through 20. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Do not be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was a baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought of, about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Okay, so our next song is What Child Is This? And I don't know if we're going to have some technical stuff going on. So, yeah, well, let's just stand together and then just look that way. That one works, so. Yeah. seated. Our next reading will be by Matt Thayer.
Luke 2, 25 through 33. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him, and he had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace, as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. And next we're going to see a, a short video, but before that I was going to have Pastor... Second. I just wanted to say uh, we are so blessed to have Pastor as our pastor here, and I just wanted to uh, just to say thank you, Pastor, for all you do here and your courage and your all your your service here, and uh, and I just want to say uh, uh, bless you and your family, and beha on behalf of uh, United Covenant Church. Uh, thank you, and Merry Christmas. It all began here, in darkness stuck in our brokenness, wandering, directionless, in need of a grace we knew nothing about. It's not much of a beginning, but this is where we were. Fast forward to a starry night in Bethlehem. You see, while we were lost in darkness, God was consumed by love, a love which led him to do the unimaginable, a love which would cost him his son. That night, the heart of Christmas began beating with a rhythm that would change the world. Jesus, the Son of God, our Savior, was born. Grace in a manger, love in the flesh. Hope had overcome hopelessness. Mercy had triumphed over brokenness and love had overpowered the darkness. Today, we celebrate that moment. We worship our Messiah, and we stand in awe of the life-changing gift God has given us. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, the true heart of Christmas. for your generosity to us. We're just so blessed to be here. And, um, you know, I, I always say that we're, you know, we're the ones that are blessed. And, um, you know, you can easily replace me, but heaven help the next pastor's wife. To, you know, <laughs> that's what I always think. But I'm not supposed to say stuff like that. But anyway, um, you know, as, as this Christmas, we've, um, for, for my family, it's been a, a wonderful time, and it's great to have my boys here, and um, Clara and Roman were here earlier. They, they went to be with Roman's family, um, so they took off, but I have, it's special Christmas because um, Roman and Clara, as many of you know, had a little baby gunner, so I'm a grandpa now, and um, and you know, when a, a baby comes into your family, it's just such a blessing. Is, is that not true? Yeah, it really is. And so we're just so blessed with that. And um, it really changes everything. 
you know, when a baby comes, they become kind of the focus of everything. And, and I was going to try to show a picture of him, but you wouldn't have seen it anyway. So it's probably, well, if you turned around, you might have, but it's okay. But anyway, I'm just going to read one little scripture, which has already been read, but I'm going to read it again. And it says, speaking about Mary and Joseph in Luke 2, verse 6. And it talks about when they, when they went to Bethlehem for the census, that they were forced to go there. The census was really, they had to go and pay taxes. That's why they had to go to Bethlehem. And it says, and while they were there, the time came for, for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. Okay, so, um, you know, when Jesus left the glory of heaven and was born into this world, it was really, at least for Mary and Joseph, it, it certainly wasn't a very convenient time for that to happen. I mean, they were traveling, you know, she was extremely pregnant, and, and then it says there was no room um, there is no lodging available for them. And we know from other scriptures that they ended up having to go to a stable, which was probably just a cave, you know, that Jesus was born in. And we know that he was placed in a manger. So it was a pretty, pretty rough setting that he was born into. And certainly it was, it was a very dark um, time in the history of Israel under the oppression of the Romans. And so it was not an easy time. And yet, for Mary and Joseph, the coming of that little baby would change everything. And of course, it, it's hard, but it changes things for the better, right? When a baby's born. And certainly, for Mary and Joseph, what a blessing. And for the rest of the world, what a blessing that that baby Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was born into this world. He makes all the difference. He made all the difference for them as a family, but he makes all the difference for us. Because, you see, Jesus did not stay a baby. We know that he grew up, and he accomplished his mission, which was eventually to go to the cross and pay for my sins and your sins and the sins of all the world. He paid for those sins on the cross. He died in our place. He was our substitute on the cross. But, you know, he, they buried him, but on the third day he rose again and he conquered sin and death. And through Jesus Christ, we can have forgiveness and we can have restoration with God the Father. And what a wonderful thing that is to be set free from our sins, to be set free from fear, from anxiety, and the punishment of hell. And by the way, that's not a really um, popular, in the day and age in which we live, people don't really like to talk about hell, but it's real. I mean, if you, read, if you believe the Bible, hell is real, punishment's real, <laughs> yes, God is love, but he's also just. And it says in John, I think it's 114, that Jesus Christ came from the Father full of grace and truth. And that could be a whole other sermon right there. So I'm, I'll, I'll, I know that we have to get to our meals and so forth, okay? <laughs> so maybe I'll save that one for another time. But, you know, Jesus Christ comes in grace and and truth, total grace for whatever sin we've committed. And he is gracious. He loves us. He wants us to, to be set free. He wants to forgive us. He wants to welcome us in because he loves us. But he's also full of truth. And the truth is that, that sin deserves punishment. And it can't be denied. So he's full of grace and truth. He's, he's holy. He's whole. And through him, we can have life. We can have forgiveness. And we can have that wonderful restoration. Jesus Christ changes everything. 
And, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of these scriptures, and, I, and of course I encourage you to read the Bible. If you're having a hard time believing or, or if it seems like, man, this stuff is just out there, you know, or crazy, I just encourage you to read the Bible because the Bible says it way more than I do. We have free Bibles back there if anybody wants a Bible or if anybody wants to talk about um, anything that, that um, comes up through reading the Bible. I do not have all the answers by any means, but I do know who does, and, and he can help us. So, um, you know, I just want to say that if there's anybody here tonight that doesn't have that wonderful relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son by the power of the Holy Spirit, I just want to encourage you to, to come to know him. And it will be the best thing that will ever happen in your life. For God so loved the world, he loved you and me so much that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And if anybody ever says to me, you know, Dan, I just don't know that Jesus is real. I don't, I don't know really what I can tell you about that. All I can tell you is that um, when I was four years old, Jesus Christ came into my room. And so I don't really know what to say to you. I just, you know, not that we should live, by our, I guess, by our, our experiences all the time, but I've just seen way too much to doubt. So anyway, seen too many miracles. And I want that for everyone. I want you to be born again. If you're here and you're not born of the Spirit, I'm telling you, there is just nothing better than that. That's why they call it the good news. So I could just go on and on about it. And if you want to hear part two, come tomorrow. <laughs> if, you, if you need another dose, come tomorrow. <laughs> come tomorrow at 10 o'clock. We'll have church tomorrow. And um, it'll be wonderful. And, and by the way, if you don't have a, a home church, man, we'd love to have you come. If you do have a home church, go to that one. But if you don't, you're always welcome here. And um, I guess I'll just close by saying, God loves you. He loves you more than you can understand. He wants to bring healing into your life. He wants to bring fulfillment into your life. And he wants to fulfill the purpose that he made you for. And there's just nothing better. And if I could be a salesman, that's what I would try to... Well, I guess I kind of am, right? So, <laughs> anyway. And we need to share that good news with other people. Because there's a whole lot of folks that are living in darkness that don't, as Jonah said, they don't, or God said to Jonah, they don't know their right hand from their left. They're in darkness, and they need to be set free. They need the light of the world. Jesus is that light. And so in just a second here, we're going to, um, we're going to light our little candles and share the light with the next person. It's a, it's a literal thing that we do, but it's really symbolic of how we need to share Jesus Christ, the light of the world, with those around us. And so um, I'm just going to invite you to, to stand up. And, and if you do need a, a candle, if you didn't get one, there are some back there in the, uh, on your way in. There were some back there. But we're going to try to go all around the sanctuary. We're going to um, make a big circle. And we're going to sing Silent Night together. Once everybody gets kind of set up, that we'll start singing when everybody gets set up. be a perfect circle by any means, but um, 
we'll go wherever we can. So it'll be all good. So on your way out, um, you can put your candles back. Thank you for that. And may the Lord bless you. Have a wonderful and very Merry Christmas. God bless you.